Uh, my name is Michael DeYoung. I am a professional photographer and I specialize in basically adventure sports and travel and tourism photography. But landscape is my passion and personal work. In 1982 or three, my girlfriend at the time, who has now been my wife of 28 years, uh, was taking a physics class and she had a camera. It was a German camera, Voigtlander, and she, it was part of her assignment and I just sort of was curious and I kind of commandeered it. It had a broken light meter. So I learned exposure the hard way, the manual way by the back of a film box. And I just started taking pictures and really liking what I was doing. And I realized that I, I had a knack for understanding how it works, understanding exposure, focus, hyperfocal distance. I didn't have any creativity back then, but uh, the mechanics of, of photography came relatively easy for me. But in 1988, I won the Montana State Fair Best of Show. And the one of the judges was the publisher of Montana Magazine. So I saw my first picture published full page in Montana Magazine in 1988, I think. And I got a whopping $75. And then I got orders to go to Alaska. So that was, I, Lori and I went to Alaska's newlyweds and stationed in Anchorage. And after four years, I just decided that I'm going to be um, dumb enough to follow my heart and not pursue a military career and just go both feet first full immersion into photography. This particular photograph here is at the end of a body of salt water called Turnigan Arm. It's about 50 miles west of Anchorage, southwest of Anchorage. And this is just a scene, an area that I've been working for many years and it, the harder you work, the better pictures you capture or create. So this is just a culmination of probably 20 years of experience, trial and error, just happened to go out there at the right time. So this is, again, this is mid-June. It's Anchorage, Alaska. It's 61 degrees north latitude. This is probably a few minutes after midnight that I shot this. Because the sun has gone down. But in, in New Mexico, where we live now, 45 minutes after the sun goes down, it's dark. In Anchorage, 45 minutes after the sun goes down, you get this, what you're seeing here. You get these, the clouds behind there are cirrus clouds. They're high clouds, they're comprised of ice crystals, and ice crystals create alpine glow, or the, we, they create the warm colors we see. So if, you're, if you know anything about physics, it's a process called backscattering. Um, I won't go into that, but this picture, everything lined up. The lupin were, were great. We had a nice day. Uh, this area is very susceptible to glacier winds. We didn't have any that night, which meant the mosquitoes were horrendous. Uh, when the winds don't blow, they come out like you wouldn't believe. And we just had a favorable reflection in slack tide pools that enabled me to make this. Uh, so the only thing that was missing was light on the foreground. And that I had to add with two strobes, two Canon 600RT strobes, fired off camera. Um, and I do that to not just add light, but also to improve the quality of light. Uh, a graduated neutral density filter is a great tool to have. And what it does is it balances out the dynamic range, but it doesn't improve the quality of light per se in the area that's shadowed. So I didn't want to touch the background. The background was perfect. I just needed to boost my foreground a little bit to make it all blend and, and work together. Well, the equipment that I use in the shot is sitting right behind me. So back there, you see a Canon 5D Mark III with a 17 to 40 zoom lens. On it is a Singray graduated neutral density filter, three stop. And in the hot shoe is a uh, Canon ST-E3 transmitter. 
So what that does is it fires these flash units wirelessly. And the, the light that comes out of a flash is very harsh light. So we modify it. First thing I do is I put a color gel on it to warm up the light. And then uh, the technique that we had to use here, remember these are not very strong powered units. Right? They're run by four AA batteries. So you're talking about a 40 or 50 watt second of output power here. So I did what was called a long throw. So I got back as far as I could because that way the light doesn't fall off from the near flowers to the light flowers. The further back you get, the more of an even throw of light it will create on that foreground. Remember when I'm using a, when I'm using a strobe for a landscape image and even a lifestyle image, the idea isn't to light the whole scene. It's to selectively light part of the scene. So in this case, I only wanted to light the flowers. So I had two strobes. I got back as far as I could, and I had to find that point where if you got back too far, the, the light just attenuated so fast that it didn't really add anything to your image. But I found that sweet spot where it evenly lit flowers that were, say, four feet in front of me to the flowers that are, say, ten feet in front of me. If I got closer with the flash, it would have blown out the ones right in front of me and put almost no light on the ones that were maybe ten feet back. That is something I don't think about really at the time that I'm creating the image. I do, I am trying to create something that has marketability. And I know that warm colors and secondary colors sell better than primary colors. So I know I had the right lighting and the right ingredients for a marketable image and it worked. This particular picture here, I think, has been on a national calendar cover, Barnes & Noble, a couple of years ago. Um, but the reaction I'm hoping to get from the viewers is, any viewer is uh, a peaceful, tranquil reaction. So, you know, Alaska has a stigma of being a very cold and hospitable place. Uh, lots of characters. You see the reality TV shows. My job photographing for Alaska tourism was to make Alaska look warm and inviting. More of your amazing work and connect with you. All right, people can find more about my work in several places. My portfolio site that's designed to be, well, anybody can look at it, but it's targeted for people who want to hire me on an assignment. That is just simply my name, michaeldeyoung.com. And there are three portfolios on there. Uh, my workshop offerings are deyoungphotoworkshops.com. And then my blog is michaeldeyoungphotography.com.